Okay. So, um, what I was going to talk about today is how um, tags happen, the kind of story of behind tags, and um, like Roberto talked this morning about like the technical issues of how to incorporate tags. But I think there's a good lot to learn from tags just about how features get into the core and how to contribute features and what's involved and what some of the blockages are and what some of the blockages aren't. So um, I'm going to start off by just saying who I am. I'm Elon Waring. And uh, there was a forum post. This actually is a real forum post on the Joomla.org site. And um, I've done a lot of things around the Joomla project. I've been on the forum since. August 18th, 2005, right after the fork. And right now, I spend most of my time working on development in the core, a lot of bug fixes, and some bigger projects like tags. So, um, and the framework. And I'm actually, today I looked, I was number three in terms of commits on the framework, which I found kind of astonishing. But most of those are doc blocks. Um, and I also wrote the official Joomla book, which is a good book. Everybody should have your clients buy it. And um, uh, I used to be president of Open Source Matters for three years. So I've been like in every part of the Joomla project. Um, I also um, I have a day job. So I'm a professor of sociology um, in New York City. And um, I write about crime organized crime, white collar crime. Um, it's very useful to me in Juma <laughs> to have to have done, done this work because there's actually a lot of similarities between how open source projects are organized and how crime is organized. And um, actually, it's a, you, you could see I have, this is from Google Scholar, but I have like a whole other life in Google Scholar that's separate from my Juma life. And, but, it's important because today some of the things I'm going to say are kind of a little sociology about Joomla, um, as well as some other things. Uh, and um, so I'm going to talk about like my version of the story of tags. I'm sure other people have other stories of how tags happened. Um, some of it, it was just like kind of the process of what it was. Um, a little bit about kind of what technically is the process of putting something into the core and what you have to think about um, with that. But more important, I think, is the other part, which is more how do you manage it? How do you survive it? How do you take the jump to do it? Uh, it's hard. And um, so just to kind of think about some strategies with that. And I also don't want to talk the whole time. so. Because I'd like to talk about how other people can do it and what people see, you know, as some of the blockages maybe for contributing more, and um, just talk about it. So um, my story of tags. I'm going to also tell you the end of the story, right at the beginning, which is that it's really hard. It's really hard to contribute to the CMS. It's hard to contribute a major feature to the CMS, and um, it's also totally worth it to do it. It's very worth it to do it. It's stressful. It's challenging. It's, it's depressing. It's exciting. But it's worth doing. Um, and I also, this is the sociology side, is that it has to be hard. It, there's, people are always talking about how can we make it easier to submit, to contribute to the CMS. But at some level, it has to be hard to contribute to the CMS because of what the CMS is. So like 3.1, it's already had over 200,000 downloads in uh, you know, a month. And so it's not a small thing to do. It's a high stakes thing. It's hundreds of thousands of websites that you're potentially impacting, millions of users, tens of thousands of developers. So it's. It, it has to be hard to contribute. It can't be easy because just of the intensity. Just like you're in the CMS, even though we're all in this like small community of people who work and are interested in the CMS, in fact, it's a small community like uh, 
really elite football team, right? It's, it's, they're all also casual and working together and drinking together and, and, and yelling at each other and being friends with each other and all that stuff, but they're doing it at this high level and, and everybody can't just jump in. Like we can't, none of us or even like a, the best high school or college player can't jump into that level of play, right? You have to perform at that elite level. And it doesn't mean your personality changes or anything else, but there's a level, an expectation that's necessary. So that's part of my, part of my message is that it has to be difficult um, when you're dealing with that many users and that many stakeholders with different and conflicting interests with each other. So the first thing I think I have to say is be prepared for that. Like you have to, if you want to write something major for the core, you just have to be prepared for the stress and the difficulty that's involved with it. You have to go in with your eyes open and know that it's going to be difficult and painful to do and people are going to yell at you and complain about you and you just have to kind of be in the moment and try to, to be as gracious as you can about it. And, and um, it's funny because when, especially when I was uh, in OSM, like I would meet people and they would say, oh, you're Elon, you take a lot of crap. And that was like repeatedly at Joomla days. The first thing people would say to me is, you take a lot of crap. And the truth is, you have to. That's part of being a leader and being a contributor to something this big. It's you do have to be ready to put up with a lot. And you just, and you can't survive it if you're not ready, like emotionally, <laughs> psychologically, to cope with that. Because um, it's just, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to be difficult and challenging. And uh, Lewis, you know, it was kind of at the center of that for a very, very long time. And he was like so stressed out and depressed like so much of the time. And, you know, but loving it too, because that's the thing when you're working at that level, just like if you're, I don't know, I watch other people, you know, I'm an observer of the world. So you, you see people, the criticism that they take, you know, if you're a movie actress, you know, every time you go out on the street and the, the papers in New York are taking your photo and like you didn't have your makeup on right and it's like oh look she looks so terrible today and I'm like I could never you know to survive that level of scrutiny requires a certain stamina and backbone and you have to have that it's just it's built into the process um, and what should you be prepared for you should you should be prepared for the good so when I um, posted on the mailing list that that we that I had a tags component for the core, and people were super Roberto like was like I love you. Can did I say I love you? And I'm like oh that's like so I have to have a screenshot of that to remember like for the whole remaining five months of the process. Um, and um, other people just you know uh, this was later in February. Uh, this guy is like well what if it doesn't get accepted? I, it's perfect. And I of course I'm thinking. If you think it's perfect, you, you've, got, you've got another thing coming. But it's like people are so excited, and it's so gratifying to have that excitement. Um, you have to be prepared for the bad, for people not to like what you're doing, and uh, for the confusing um, <laughs> that uh, is really confusing sometimes when people are not are sending you contradictory messages. I'm gonna go through these more in a minute. The predictable, like some things are just built into our community, they're going to happen. So I could also put Nick's picture up there, but um, the, uh, so I'll just talk a little bit more about the good. So if you are trying to develop for the core, it is really important that you get like some of that good feedback. And like what I really recommend also is like I, during while I was doing this, once I had a prototype, I didn't plan this, but I did a couple of Joomla days and they asked me to talk about tags and I did a user group meeting and I talked about tags and like end users are so excited and they don't really care about like is the API right or not. They just like the feature. And so they're so excited about it and happy to have tags in the Joomla core and to get that feedback and excitement from them. It like carries you through the next few weeks of whatever it is you're working on. Um, you do have to be prepared for people not to like what you did, right? Like, 
Jamri, he hates tax. Jam I, Jamri's my friend, but he hates tax. And um, tax, in fact, never broke multilingual, but he's, you know, he's Jamri, so he has to be dramatic. And um, so one of the things I want to say about if you want to contribute to the core is when someone posts, it, t it is totally broken. It breaks everything. It sh and, and, you know, believe me, he was saying much worse on Skype. And um, don't press that send button when you, want, when you want to immediately reply, right? Just take a deep breath. Think about how you want to answer to that comment. Take some time to compose it. Cool down. And then you can send the reply. Don't ignore it, but just, like, take your time, compose an answer and try to come up with a good answer that's reflecting, you know, respecting the opinion. And certainly, especially initially, there's lots of, there's going to be lots of problems in your, whatever you do, as, as soon as people start to try to use it. But just, you have to be ready to cope with those. You have to be ready to cope with the second, it was like, this is the announcement that says like the pre, this was the, commenting on the preview of Tag's article that was on Joomla.org. And it was like the second response was like, it breaks everything. It's like, oh, my moment, and it breaks everything. So just, you have to be ready. You have to just be ready to deal with that. Um, the confusing. So um, if you were following this, you know, like Andrew kind of went from being like, oh, Tag's is great, to like, this is never going to be ready. There's no way, in my professional opinion, there's simply too much scale to finish this up by 3.1. And again, it's like, first of all, you're thinking, so what does he think? Does he like it? Does he hate it? What is he trying to say? And some of it is you just have to know people are not totally consistent in what they think. They change their minds over time, but also, Sometimes they're in a good mood, sometimes they're in a bad mood, sometimes they've tested it, sometimes they've just looked at the code, sometimes they just don't like the idea, period. And so, and, and sometimes there's a process where people change their minds. So it's not really that people are being confusing so much as they're changing their mind, they're hearing about it. They might like it initially and then try it and see it doesn't work for what they want, and it wasn't what they expected, and then they don't like it, and then maybe you bring them back around, and or maybe you don't. But you do again have to be, um, you know. I think with someone with when it's more of a developer giving you feedback on stuff, it's like if you read if you went to Joomla code and read the whole thread, it's like okay, so tell me what your what you think the problems are, right? Explain, try, you know, trying to understand what his he felt like the blockages were. Um, the predictable, really, you just have to know in a community as big as Joomla, there's always drama, there's always, there's always just things that happen and things that people will say. And there is a certain point where sometimes you do have to just say, I'm, I'm going to let someone else handle this one. So in this case, Mark just was like, it's too late. <laughs> We're not taking tags out at beta 4. It's not happening. <laughs> and um, uh, But again, it's just part of coping with a community with 10,000 developers in it. I mean, it's you have to just know some people are going to be more challenging than others, and some people are not going to be happy with what you're doing, and some people are going to be very happy with what you're doing. And you can't, if you write good software, just like if you're doing any other creative thing, you're not actually going to make everybody happy all the time. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't be very good. Um, uh, and then there's Roberto again. So, oh wait, I have a repeat. What happened? Um, so how do you cope with that? So one thing is, I think it's really important to just have a, infra, a support structure. Um, around you of people who maybe aren't directly involved in the CMS but kind of understand about software um, and so have people who you can just say I'm freaking out about the fact that we're going to be releasing in a, in a couple weeks and 
what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. And it's just like so good to have someone who you can share that with and not feel like they're going to be, uh, you know, they're going to, I have some understanding of what it's like to do a big release and also just like of the stresses of writing software and delivering software. Um, and also just trying to keep some perspective all the time. So it's really important and it's important to have those friends out there who will help you keep perspective, but just to remember that all software has bugs, software's never finished, you always have to be rewriting, you always have to be updating. And, and you know, I've spent like five years in the bug squad, so I can tell you every, we've never had software without bugs, there is no software without bugs. We just have to try to avoid the really big ones. Um, and we have to try to work together to solve them. But that's just the process, the idea that you're going to produce perfect software. And I don't even mean out of the, like the first release isn't going to be perfect. I mean, it's never perfect. The C, you know, 2.5 has been out for, you know, a long time. And we still, we know there's lots of little issues that are involved in 2.5. So it's just, that's the way software is. There's always places where, especially when you have so many users and people are pushing it. People are pushing it in unexpected directions. So you just have to you have to you have to be in the in the the zen of of this moment and say I accept I'm ex accepting of the fact that people are going to find problems with my code and I'm going to fix those problems or I'm going to get them to help me fix those problems but it's not a judgment on me or something about my anything about me personally really that is causing there to be, uh, it's not them, find, them finding bugs, it's not like it's them finding problems with me, it's them finding problems with code. So you have to really be able to separate out that. Um, I also say that in thinking about uh, writing software for the core, you have to be, so there's certain things that you have to be aware of that you're doing that's different maybe, it might be, it's not really different than writing a regular extension that people are going to install. It's just that people don't always think of the CMS this way, I think. And um, some of these things are maybe more important. So you're thinking, I'm gonna write this feature for the core and I'm just gonna write some code. But actually, you have to write the documentation for the code. So. And one of the things I think I did pretty well, actually, with tags was to document as I went. And so people could always go look on my repository at GitHub and see, like, at the moment, what the APIs were for and how to work with it. It changed a lot because people gave me good, difficult feedback on some things um, as we went along. Uh, it, it's also things like the marketing team shows up and says, we have to do this marketing materials for tags, so you have to give us all this stuff. And what do you think they had, the, you know, what do you think about this video we're going to make about tags? And I'm, I don't know. I don't really know anything about making, you know, about what would be a good video or not. But there's a lot of different elements. And the Joomla project, uh, and, you know, community elements like working with Joomla Days and things like that to get the word out about what we were doing so they can talk about changes in it, about tags and about changes in the core. So um, there's one of the things about the Joomla project is there's so many different teams working on so many different things. Like, I'm always amazed to find out, oh, yeah, there's like a chat group that's only working on like this one particular element of marketing or there's this other chat group that's only doing this like very specific user experience piece and who knows there's a hundred there's probably a hundred different groups of people working on Joomla issues and so all of a sudden when you're doing like especially a major feature all of them are kind of coming into play. So it's like you suddenly discover there's a documentation mailing list and they're talking about you on the documentation mailing list. You never even knew there was a documentation mailing list, but they're saying Elon has to do this or we have to get Elon to do this thing in the wiki in order to make sure that we're able to do it right. So it's many more pieces than you realize. And you think you're gonna be able to be just like bug fixing for the last four weeks but you're not. You have to deal with all this other stuff. 
Um, so then I want to talk a little bit about why tags in particular ended up in the core because it's, you know, a lot of times people say I'm going to write this feature. Um, a lot of times they say they're going to write a feature and they don't really do it. But why particularly were did tags of all the features that were out there end up being the one that was written and the one that was accepted? In fact, the core hardly ever turns down features, but um, maybe for not sometimes they take features that people disagree with. But why was it that tags ended up being the fe the big feature that was accepted? Um, well, the first thing I'll say is that this is a mailing list thread that has been active since March of 2010, right? And it's about why can't we put things into multiple categories? And that mailing list thread has 86 posts, 28 authors over three years. So it was not a, one of these crazy threads we have on the mailing list, sometimes with like 200 posts in a week that no one can read. And um, it was a, just a mailing list, a, a thread that like, this is a topic that came up over and over again. And people would find that old thread and revive it. And it went on for, you know, three, it's going on for three years. And this is, this is the most important reason why tags ends up in the core is because it was something that was desired by people, by both developers and implementers and end users. Uh, they all wanted it. It was always high on the ideas site. Uh, it always had a lot of votes on the ideas site. It always had a lot of top discussion on the mailing list. And so that's really the first most important reason. So you have to think about this, that this is, two, this is, almost, this is really three years of discussion. So putting a major feature in the core, it's not a short-term commitment. It's really kind of a long-term commitment. And, I mean, I was in, that, in the early parts of that thread, too. Um, and then what kind of happened is that last spring, it came up again, the, the, the thread was revived, and there was a pretty hot and heavy discussion of how different ways that it could be implemented. <coughs> Excuse me. And then um, people, uh, as usual, no one was really taking, people were talking about a lot of ideas, and, uh, but no one was sitting down and writing out a plan to implement them. So what happened is that um, Mark Dexter and I talk a lot about the CMS and what should be happening in the CMS and what the priorities are. And so we started talking about it last summer that we really felt we had to deal with that as a tagging as an issue. And because it just was not going to go away. And it really was like a fundamental um, Kind of thing that we needed. If you have content, you should be able to do something like multi-categorization. So we talked about it, and then at Joomla World Conference, we had planned it, and we did sit down and have a pretty long uh, discussion out in the in the courtyard about what tags would look like, based on our experience. And Mark and I probably, with Jean Marie, are probably the biggest, most involved people in kind of managing the CMS and doing code in the CMS. So um, uh, we did that. Uh, we listened to people a lot. Um, we also, I also started doing some, after that, both before and after that meeting, I really started to do some research because I knew, for example, that people really like WordPress tags. And so what is it about WordPress tagging that they like? What is it that's a limitation? Because there are definitely some limitations of WordPress tagging. but. Um, so trying to f just do some research on, on that aspect of it from the site implementer user side. What is it that people are really asking for when they're asking for tags? Because it's just a very vague concept, tags. But what kinds of behaviors are you looking for? So I spent a lot of time listening, re going, visiting websites, different websites that had different tag use cases that weren't using Joomla, but using other systems, but that were using tags in many different ways. So I always talk about Stack Overflow as one, one site that I visit a lot because that's a site that's totally built around tagging. Everything there is organized by tag. And, and you as a user, you're defined by your tags that you follow and all the content is tagged. And then there's other websites where it's a more con traditional content-centered model, but they use taggings for basically search so that people can find related items. 
and there's other ones that use it. You can, there's other use cases as well. So there was maybe three or four different main use cases that I was finding out in the wild. And um, so I ended up, after all this, writing not a really a detailed spec, but just like a narrative spec of what I thought people were asking for and looking for in a tagging system. And it really was just four points about the tagging is a way of grouping items that allows multiple assignments to the same item. And um, they should, so one of the important things is that from the Joomla community, I was really hearing that nesting mattered a lot. They really liked the way categories nest. And um, in fact, at Joomla World Conference, as I was getting on the shuttle to the airport, Yannick says to me, without nesting, it'll be worthless. And so, um, it's it this was something really important so actually when andrew made that comment about you shouldn't try to implement nesting that was a point where i had to say no this is like a stand i'm making we're having nesting even though it create does create a lot of challenges um it's very important um that it doesn't it has to work with the menu system and that uh Anybody, sh any developer should be able to buy in the system so long as they follow the APIs, basically. So long as you follow the rules. If you buy into the system, any kind of content should be able to tag, because that's one of the ongoing problems. People don't necessarily talk about it as a tagging problem, but the other problem that tagging solves is that we have so many different content types and you want to group them together. You want cross type, and the category system doesn't allow that. The category system is so rigid. So, so that was a key fee. That number four is a key feature. And that also tags won't affect the content. Like tags don't change the access level of the content. They don't change the ACL. They don't change the published state. They have, they have no impact on content. You put a tag on, you take a tag off. It's just like a piece of paper. It has no impact on the item you're putting the paper on. So um, that was my basic spec. Um, and then I more or less went into hiding and wrote some code. And writing a basic tag component is not hard because it's just content and it's just a, the com tags itself is nothing. It's just, you know, it, it's just a copy of categories basically because it's nested. Otherwise it would just be a content copy of web links. And um, it's very, very simple as a component. But what's important is thinking about like the underlying um, APIs for tags. And this is another way that writing um, for the core is different than writing for like an extension that's going to, to uh, be installed into the core. I had to do a lot of thinking. I had to refactor. Before I ever went public, I refactored like three times because I was like, this, this is OK, but it's not really good enough. And so I'm going to do this over again. And I redid like the model especially changed like six times at least in the course of, in the course of development. I think it's actually pretty important if you, for, for getting major features written that someone go off and write the first version. I don't think. You know, code is art, right, in, in many ways. And art is, is often not well done by groups. It's often well done by one person. But that one person takes some guidance, right? But that it's best, I actually think it's the only way to really get things going is to have one person go off, write some code, and then to give people code that they can tear, tear apart. Right, and I find that, right. I mean, I've written a lot of books also in my other life, and I've written a lot with other people, and you always say, you write the first draft, I'll write the second draft. And it can't be that two people are in the room saying the word, you know, you have to, one person has to sit down and write that chapter. Another person can write another chapter. So, um, but that's the best, I actually think you won't, you'll just get mediocre code if you try to do too much by committee. Um, although I can talk about how in UCM stuff we're trying to modularize some of it, make, make it into smaller tasks so that there can be more people helping. Um, so that was the first thing was to go write some code and then finally to go public with the code, which is a big you know step to post to the mailing list and say, hey, I have some code I'd like people to look at. And, um, it, but it's great because people really do look at it. So um, you do get stories back. Um, wait, what happened? Why am I losing? 
Oh, so uh, listen. So then you get your feedback, listening, fixing bugs, refactoring again, fixing some more bugs, uh, hearing about all the problems people are having, hearing with um, just many difficulties, uh, deciding what issues to stand your ground on. Uh, Think like a core developer. As I said, you have to think at a lower level than you do when you're installing an extension on top of something, especially like when you're doing a complex extension like Kanina, it's like a different thing because you have so much going on there. But for a basic extension, you know, you don't have to think about APIs to other, uh, to other extensions or to throughout the core. Um, you think, need to think about what kinds of changes you need, what, li what packages or libraries you need, what's not there. So for example, I, so as part of writing tags, I did two new methods in JDatabase query. One of them is the date math method because I wanted to be able to have trending tags and you have to be able to say, give me everything in the last hour or the last week or whatever unit you want. And we didn't have that supported. Um, in J database query before and I also wrote union all but I ended up not using it but still it's a good feature so uh, the um, so and the I think in general if you're writing code and you need new methods rather than do a workaround you should submit a pull request to the core and I just had a lot of comments that said this is here until the platform or until the framework takes this we're gonna have this code here um, but then definitely want it expecting, and it was eventually moved into, into the core libraries. So um, that's part one of thinking like a core developer, not doing workarounds. You're not, you're solving a problem of the core, you're not working around the limitations of the core. So it's a totally different approach. Um, the other thing is, as I said, uh, you have to think about APIs more than anything else. So the core on the whole, probably uh, most people I think agree, the core is, should not be this Christmas tree, apple tree of millions of extensions. The core should provide a core. And so there's reasons that core extensions should be in the core. And um, there's reasons that a million, we don't need a million other extensions in the core, partly because it's by having an extensible core, you can uh, people can install them as needed, right? So think about if, if things that are going into the core should really be providing APIs to other extensions. Uh, that's my approach right now. So uh, whether it's media, come you know we're going to hopefully have a new media manage media manager in 3.2. Uh, but the important thing about media manager is not com media that's useful, but it's how does media interact with every other extension that's installed in Joomla. So that's what we're asking that summer of code student partly to really think about. Um, so, and you should have to be able to answer that question, why shouldn't this be an extension? Um, and uh, you have to really think about, um, there's things you cannot make a decision to ignore. I feel if I'm writing something for me or for a website I'm building, I can decide I don't care about right to left or left to right. I'm not going to worry about supporting that. And um, I can decide, I can even decide not to use JTEXT, right? I can just put text because I'm only going to use it on this site. But in the core, you must use JTEXT for everything. Uh, you could decide um, I'm not going to worry about all the accessibility issues, but in the core, you have to worry about accessibility. And one of the big issues, and in my opinion, one of the major problems with tags is that the tag seal is not accessible. And that's because Boots, because I've chosen, is not accessible. So uh, we have to solve that problem. That's a problem that remains to be solved. And it's part of the regression on accessibility we've had in 3.0. Um, code style, right? You have to follow the course code style. You have to, to, to use the same kind of patterns Literally, code, you know, you know, you have to run the code style checks, but you also have to code in the same, like, style that the core is coded. Um, you have to do things like deal with search. Like, I forgot. Oh, one of the other problems with with tags, you may not have noticed that it has a Finder search plugin, but it doesn't have the old search plugin, and so immediately, like, I, I just it totally did not even 
come into my mind to remember I needed to write an old search plugin. So, and immediately, of course, the day after release, people were like, where's the search plugin? And, um, well, we'll have it. Uh, so there's just many pieces that you have to remember that you're interacting with in the core. You can't say, ah, oh, you won't worry about search or I'm not going to worry about, uh, you know, some, some other element that's re basically required in the core. You have to think about the URLs and making sure they're going to work with the, with the way the core works. Things like being ready for feeds and services. Again, like in my initial first round of tags, I didn't have feed layouts, I didn't have any of that stuff. And you really, it's not really acceptable in the core not to be serving a feed. If, you, if it's a feed kind of uh, extension, it needs to have a feed. Um, you need to think about user interface and you need to think about integration. So like with tags, I didn't just have to write the APIs and the tags component, I had to, go through web content and web links and news feeds and categories and contacts and make all of them basically do the conversion process to support tags in all of those components. So if you're doing something fundamental like that, you know, if you're, um, it's not like an afterthought to say, well, I'm going to add plugins for different components to support my, to work with my extension. You have to just do it. You have, so that's a lot of work. Actually, every time we made an API change, you have to go through and make those changes in every single one of those components. And um, that means other stuff doesn't get done too. But so the integration, really important. Um, thinking about how the, how the field should work, even issues like where should the tag field go in the editors? Does it go on the on that side part with the detail and the detail submenu, which is where it's ended up? Does it go in the set in the options page in the second page of the second tab? Does it go in the third tab? So it's a big and everybody who writes a new feature always wants their either to be on the first page, the first tab or to be in the details. So um, it's 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 like a battle for space. And if, at a certain point, something has to give on those. So um, but there's like a discuss. So there's a discussion that has to happen. Um, and it's a hard discussion like we're discussing. We'll discuss it in JBS. The, kind of CMS managers are discussing it, the, uh, the maintainers are discussing it. So it's, it's not easy by any means. Uh, also, I have to say, if you want to do a feature for the, I'm saying this not as a policy thing, but as someone who's a main, you know, who actually helps maintain the CMS and has helped maintain the CMS for a long time, I, my feeling is if people contribute features to the core, they really have to be committed for at least three to four months afterwards to be there to fix the issues and to help resolve the issues that happen because it's really difficult when we take, a, and we've had bad experiences with this where we take a feature and then the person kind of disappears and, and we don't necessarily understand, like the JBS may not understand how all the code is working and why certain decisions were made. And probably there were good reasons for those decisions. But when the person is like, I'm burned out, and so I'm not going to be online on Skype, or I'm not going to answer my email, and we're, we're getting bug reports from users, and we have to fix things, it's really stressful and difficult for, the, for that team. And that team is the, you know, so important for maintaining, you know, for taking care of users and making sure that things work. And, for dealing, like I said, bugs are part of life, and it's really important. So I think you have to make that commitment to be available um, if you want to do it. So, um, and um, so I think people, other people, I don't know why that's off the screen, but other people can can do major contributions also. So and also smaller contributions, and I really think. Um, as I said, some of it is hard because it's hard, right? Some of it, it's, it's you're working at a very high level, you have a big audience, you have high stakes for, for people's websites, so it's challenging. But then again, um, 
it could probably be easier in some ways and maybe we could talk now about how to help people to contribute more to both make uh uh more I, it's not that it's not welcoming but to how how to talk about features in a different way than we've talked about them in the fat in the past because in the past before i would say the last few releases finder bootstrap the the ui were ux work that kyle did and then this were the three times really it's new for us to take feature to take code like that in the past it always kind of came from like Lewis and Andrew would write some code and they would do the main implementation and the rest of us would come along and clean up and um, now it's like there's many more people actually engaged in making change in the CMS and making the CMS better so but it can be better we can definitely do better and making it easier for people and more not easier in the technical sense because it's going to be hard and probably not any less stressful because like i said you're working at a high level and you have a lot of stakeholders but just easier in terms of facilitating it and and um, actually facilitating talk about it because i think all right so tags took basically six months of my life to do um, and I had to stop doing other things actually for Joomla as part of that. Um, and it was three, two and a half years of talk before that. So how can we maybe compress at least the talk time some, uh, to get to, to be able to pull our new features. So I would like to open up the floor to people to maybe give some comments about that and what they think. So, yes. Oh, well, great. This is, really, really this is what I mean about the good, right? <laughs> like, thank you. Thank you. I was just asking the questions regarding tags. Uh, is there any way to have a menu option to have a block layout instead of having categories featured? This is the it has. Instead of saying, OK, this is the tags I want to have blog layout. It has blog layout. Okay. Yeah, you can tell it. it. Basically, all a blog layout is is a title and the, the intro text. And so basically every content type has a, well, if they, if a, it, all the core content types have mapped something to intro text, like usually like the description. And, but, uh, and if a developer is using, uh, is, is buying into tags and they map something to that intro text and you can display that, you can display an image. The only thing we don't have is leading. Like you, you get to pick one, you pick the number of columns you want. And you pick whether you want to show text or not and whether you want to show images or not. But we don't have the two-part thing where you can have some 100% and then the multicom underneath. But that's just an override. And we could actually, uh, so we could actually do that. I, we should do that just to, so people can replicate their layouts. Yeah. yeah. And that's the big question right now, that we want to have the same kind of layout. Right. Doing overrides. Right. So Yeah, yeah. So, but how important to you is it to have the mixed, some full across and some multi column? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. One, one thing that's uh, not specific about a feature, but a process, in my opinion, we don't have a lot of testers going to GitHub. Yeah. Because developers need to be testing now as well as developers. That's our job. Exactly. What's the status on uh, the pull tester project? On the pull tester project? The, um, the, pat, the, the, uh, that, the one where it's the component and you can test uh, pull requests. So I will say, first of all, the most of the important contributions I got, like as soon as I posted on the mailing list before I made a pull request, I posted a link to my repo. And I got many, I got like a number, like Roberto was one, but also five or six other people just sending me fixes and improvements. So. Um, uh, even before you have a pull request, there's, there's that issue. Uh, but once we have, as my understanding is, they're working on it. I mean, it worked actually pretty well when Ian first wrote the first implementation of that. It worked great. I mean, it wasn't polished, but uh, it shouldn't be. With, since we have the GitHub API, it's relatively. So do you know what he's talking about? He's saying there's a component that you can just go and see the list of pull requests 
and click on one and it'll install, it'll just do the diff onto your, onto your site. And then it's really nice because it'll undo it. So it's not, you know, it's great for testing. Uh, although I think that if you're really a developer of who's more sophisticated, you should just take, like most people were taking, just pulling a branch, pulling what my branch to their local and working on that. And that was, that's really, uh, one good thing about tags is it got more people doing that. Like they would pull my branch, then they would make a branch on theirs, send me a pull request, and I was getting pull requests from all over the place, and it was great. So people, a lot of people learned how to really use more of the Git features for that. Did you want to say something? Yes. Yes. Uh, first, congratulations for making the tags for the <laughs> Thank you. Yes. The table nested or the queries? Yeah. Okay, because I think there's two issues. The big issue right now for me on performance that I spent like the last week on is the save in the back if you're doing a lot of saves. It, it, once you have a lot of tags, it, the save is really slow. So actually, we, we have a little discussion going on. Um, and I've been running, uh, you know, I have a, a CLI that makes like 20,000 tags, and, and it does get. Um, it works. I, be, I have, so I'm going to be making a pull request on a couple things to just speed things up with JTable nested and maybe make some improvements <laughs> there. Because the truth is, it's the same save as categories, but you don't make as many categories as you're going to make tags. And so like when I went, say I went to Stack Overflow, like that site has like 500,000 tags, right? And they have like, it's insane, right? You go there and I, if you look to the end of their list, if you go all the way to the end of their list, it's an insane number. And I'm like, well, you know, what if a Joomla site tried to do this? Would we be able to do it? And right now, no. Not, I mean, you could do it, but very slowly. <laughs> and actually your memory, most, you know, on many servers, you're, some, on some saves, the memory would run out. So um, we need to, but that's because of a bug in JTable nested. So that's the, but what about the front end queries? Are you talking about front end queries? About the front end, if you okay. have 10,000 articles in a single category, and three to five types on this article, then it gets really slow. It gets really slow, okay. Well, I'm happy to, I'm very happy to have performance improvements and to have query improvements. And I really think it's important going forward because we want to have like, a set of core queries into the ta that table that are really fast. So um, it's, and complex ones, right? Because one of the things with tags is, I, people have not necessarily looked at all the features of tags, but it does like and and or searches, and it does, ch you, know, you can task for the ch child tags or not for the child tags. And there's a lot of variations in there that are, are good, language filtering also. So uh, it's good to have all those things, but there's a cost with them. So, and also some of the cross database support stuff makes it slower. That's my, yeah. Right. And just be curious about it. How, how is uh, how is the box squad um, tolerance to to people being on and off? Is is it better uh, to have some people than? Oh, it's always better to have some people, and people come in and out. Like even I, who's been in the bug squad, you know, pe people are a little inside baseball. Like, I like left the bug squad for like almost a year. Um, I was still doing bugs, but I just couldn't take it anymore. And um, but now I'm back in there. And there's a like a chat. There's a bug squad open chat basically that's going on 24 hours a day, and. Um, it's the bugs. What I love about the bug squad is it's people at a lot of different levels. It's people who are total just site end users, people who have their own sites. They, they've installed their own sites and 
they just want to help out. And then there's like site people who are maybe site implementers. And so they have a lot of sites, but they're not developers in the sense of writing a lot of PHP code or writing like components, or they might write a module, but they might, you know, um, but some of them, not even that. And, but the thing is, they know how to use, all right, we have to end. So, but they know how to use Joomla and that is the kind of testing you can't get from automated testing. Like people who say, this will not work for my users. This interface won't work, or this, this is something my users are gonna try to do and it's not gonna work. So the bug squad, and you learn in the bug squad, right? Because you learn, as long as there has, and there's a lot of good code discussions in there. So, so I encourage people to hop into the bug squad at whatever your level. Okay, so we have to top, stop because there's another talk coming. But thank you.